Hi, my name is Dr. Tarsia Huber, and I am going to be teaching you some trigonometry. I'm super excited. Trigonometry is one of my favorite subjects to teach. I love trig. I love the applications of it. And so I hope you pick up on some of this enthusiasm that I have towards trigonometry. And I'm just excited to be able to teach you this trick. Um, you will have to excuse the noise you hear in the background because I am working from home. My kids are at home, so you might occasionally hear them screaming or fighting in the background. So I'm just going to give you the heads up now that on some of the videos you might hear that. So if you can just tune that out, uh, learn to tune it out like I have, hopefully you can. I'll try to edit out as much as I can, but there'll be some cases where I can't edit it out. But that's my life. So um, I'm a mother. I have two sons. Right now, when, I, when I'm recording this video, I have a seven and a three-year-old. I'm a wife, uh, I love math, I'm a math professor, and so I love to travel, I love to dance, I love spending time with my family. And so that's a little bit about me and I'm excited that you are watching this video and I hope that I'm able to explain it enough to you, break it down enough for it to make sense. Don't hesitate at any time to uh, comment with a question or email me a question. I'll do my best to respond to every question, okay? So if you have any questions, don't hesitate to put them in the comments below. All right, so let's get started. So in this video, we're gonna be talking about complementary and supplementary angles. But before we can talk about complementary and supp supplementary angles, we just need to define some basic terms, some basic definitions that gets you started with trig. And these are basic terms that you should have learned in your geometry class in high school. Um, so the first term is a line. And I'm sure most of you know a line. But a line extends in both directions, and that's what this arrow means. It means it keeps going and going and going like the Energizer Bunny. It doesn't stop. Um, so if you have a line that extends in two directions, it keeps going. So it's going to keep on going. If it keeps going, it's a line in both directions, right? <clears throat> that's a line. Then you have a line segment. Now, a line segment does not continue on in both directions. It actually is a line, but it cuts off at two points, all right? So it cuts off at a point here, and we usually call this A or B, or different letters. This just defined, those points are defined by a letter. And so this is what we call a line segment. It actually ends at two points. It doesn't continue on. So that's the difference between a line and a line segment, all right? Then we have what's called a line ray. And a line ray, continues on in one direction so it has one point and then it continues on usually you know we use a but you can use any letter to define that point but it cuts off on one end but continues in the other end and so that is what we call a line ray and so it's important to know these and this is where angles come from an angle is actually two line rays that you put together or connect them at a single point so Here's a line ray, and if I use that same point to extend it out in a different direction, here's another line ray. So I have two line rays, and this creates an angle between those two line rays, okay? One side is called the initial side, and the other side is called the terminal side. So if this is the initial side, that means my angle starts here, and it goes to this side, the terminal side. Terminal means that's where it stops, okay? So you got an initial side and the terminal side, and that angle is the measurement in between those two rays. And we usually use Greek letters to define uh, angles. So we use Greek letters like theta, alpha, beta. Those are just a few that are commonly used. This is theta, alpha, and beta. But you can use other ones like mu, but Greek letters are usually used to define angles all right so two things we need to know is that positive angles go in a counterclockwise direction so this angle here it's going counterclockwise so clockwise means you know if you have a clock and it's the 12 and the 3 here it rotates this way right that's clockwise so a clockwise angle is a negative angle but a counterclockwise angle is a positive angle so this angle since it's going in this direction it will be a positive angle now, say there's another angle here. Say we take this angle that starts here, but goes around to this side. So now that's going clockwise. So if the angle starts here and it goes, if we were interested in measuring this angle that starts here 
and that stops here, that will be a negative angle because it goes in a clockwise direction. So remember this, positive angles go in a counterclockwise direction and negative angles go in a clockwise direction. Okay, so now the most common unit of measurement that we measure angles with is degrees, okay? I'm pretty sure you've heard of that. But when I measure an angle, we usually measure the what's degrees. We'll learn a new measurement in this course, but for now, we say the most common measurement is degrees. Now, if this is my initial side, and I wanted to start here, but come all the way back around and stop where I started, then we call that a 360 degree angle. And so that's why, well, sometimes people say, oh, they made a 360. But actually, if you make a 360, that's like starting here and turning all the way around and stopping back where you started. So they should say they made a 180 because half of 360 is 180. So if I was to say, start here, but stop, in the opposite direction because when you say when people say oh they made a 360 they were usually referring to they turned around and went the other way but if you make a 360 you actually going right back to where you started but if you want to go in the opposite direction then you actually go half a 360 and half a 360 is 180 degrees so the angle from here to here is 180 degrees but the angle that went all the way around was 360 degrees now, if you go half of that 180 degrees, half of 180 is 90. And we know we usually use this little half of a square to represent a 90 degree angle. And 90 degree angle is also called a right angle, if you remember. Okay. So a 90 degree angle is also called a right angle. And a 180 degree angle is also called a straight angle. So just some basic angles. So if this is my initial side, if I go all the way around, start where, stop where I started, then that's a 360 degree angle. If I go half of that, divide 360 by two, that's a 180 degree angle. If I go a fourth of the 360 or half of the 180, however you want to define it, that gives me a 90 degree angle, which will be straight up right there. And then there's one more that we'll be interested in, and that's if I go halfway and then I go another 90 degrees so that'll be 180 plus 90 which is a 270 degree angle so the angle from here that stops here is 270 and so those are four common angles that we will use a lot throughout trigonometry and so we have the 90 degree angle the 180 degree angle the 270 degree angle and the 360 degree angle so if you look at these lines that I formed from making those angles, it looks like your coordinate system, right? Your X axis and your Y axis. So that's basically what you form. Those are the angles that you form when you make the 90, the 180, the 270, and the 360. And so any angle that's between zero and 90 is what we call an acute angle. So if my angle is between zero and 90 degrees, that's called an acute angle. So that's any angle that falls in this first quadrant right here, okay? Any angle that's between 90 and 180, I don't know if y'all remember these terms from geometry, but that is called an obtuse angle. Okay, so these are the same terms from geometry, but now we're, we're putting these angles in the coordinate system. And so, any angle in the second quadrant, so if the initial side is here, the positive x-axis, if the terminal side stops in the second quadrant, you're going to have an obtuse angle. Again, a 180 degree angle is called a straight angle. A 90 degree angle is called a right angle. And I think those are the main ones that we use a lot. So just to familiarize yourself with the basic terminology, those are the ones we use the most. Okay, so now that we have those basic terms out of the way, now we can really get to what the topic of this video is about, complementary and supplementary angles. All right, so first let's start with complementary angles. Complementary angles is when you have two angles whose sum is 90 degrees, okay? So that's two angles that when you add them together, when you take them and add them together, you get 90 degrees. So for example, I'm gonna create a 90 degree angle 
And I'm just gonna put a ray, so this is the 90 degree angle. I'm just gonna put a line ray somewhere in here. And I'm gonna say this breaks this 90 degree angle into two separate angles. This is angle uh, theta and this is angle alpha. That's a theta. So then what we can say is that we know that theta and alpha are complementary angles because we know that those two angles together sum up to give you that 90 degree angle, okay? So that's a complementary angle. Now, a supplementary angles or supplementary angles are two angles whose sum is 180 degrees. So that's when you take two angles, you add them together and they give you 180 degrees. So remember we said the 180 degree angle is the straight angle, okay? And so I could take a line ray, if this is my point, I could put a line ray anywhere in here. It would break this up into two angles. Let's just say beta and mu. That's a mu symbol. The, again, these are Greek letters then we would say beta and mu are supplementary angles. That's because if we take those two angles together, they create a straight angle. And so the way we write this out mathematically is we say here, theta plus or alpha plus theta is equal to 90 degrees. And then here we would say beta plus mu is equal to 180 degrees. So these are your complementary angles and these over here are your supplementary angles. That's supplementary. And so now let's look at some examples that we would use to uh, that we would use these definitions for in order to solve. Okay, so for example, one it says for an for an angle measuring forty degrees, find the measure of its complement and its supplement. Okay. So we have an angle. We're going to call it theta. It measures is night. Its measure is forty degrees, and we want to first of all we want to find its complement. So remember the definition of complement. That, that means the two sums of the angles add up to ninety degrees. So if we call its complement alpha, that means when I take theta plus alpha, it adds up to ninety degrees. Well, we know that theta is forty degrees, but we need to figure out what is alpha. So 40 plus what gives you 90? And hopefully you know the answer to this. 40 plus 50 gives you 90 degrees. But if you didn't know that, then you can solve this algebraically by subtracting the 40 degrees from both sides. Okay? And so that tells you that alpha is equal to 50 degrees. So your complement of 40 degrees would be 50 degrees. All right? So the complement of 40 degrees would be 50 degrees and it didn't tell us what to call these angles i just made up uh i just picked the greek letter for them i caught the angle that gave me theta and then i just picked alpha to be the complement of it but you don't have to do it that way it's just the way you can do it and so now we need to find the supplement of alpha of theta so remember the supplement means you take two angles you add them together they give you 180. so if theta is 40 then when i add it to alpha or i'll use a different letter say beta then it's going to add to 180 degrees and we know that theta is 40 degrees and so we need to figure out 40 plus what gives me 180 and so in order to solve it if you don't know it off the top you will just subtract 40 degrees from both sides and that would give you beta is equal to 140 degrees okay and so that's how you will find the supplement of 40 degrees, all right? So remember, complement the two angles add up to 90. Supplement the two angles add up to 180 degrees. So let me know if you have any questions. Don't forget to put them in the comments below if you do. Okay, so for example, two, we want to find the measure of the supplementary angles with the measures 10x plus 7 and 7x plus 3 degrees. 10x plus 7 and 7x plus 3 degrees. All right, so we have two angles, and that's what their measures represent. So I'm going to call this one theta, and I'm going to call this one alpha. And it says that they're supplementary. So the key word here is supplementary. That means when I take these two angles together, what should they equal? Hopefully you said 180 degrees. So theta plus alpha is equal to 180 degrees. So that means I need to replace what theta is, 10x plus 7. So all I'm doing is putting in 10x plus 7 in for theta. And I need to take what alpha is, 
7x plus 3 and put it in for alpha. All right, so all I did was replace the 10x plus 7 with theta, the 7x plus 3 with alpha. And so when I add those together, that gives me 180 degrees. And so now I have a linear equation that I can solve. Combine your like terms, 10x and 7x is 17x, and 7 and 3 is 10. And then solve for x by getting rid of everything that's on the side with x. So the first thing I'll get rid of is this 10. So I'll subtract 10 from both sides. 17x is equal to 170 degrees. And then get rid of this 17 by dividing both sides by 17. And so you get x is equal to 10 degrees. So now, that is what x is equal to. It actually wants you to find the measures of the angles, okay? So that means now I need to go back and plug in this 10 for x in both of these. So theta ends up being 10 times 10 plus 7. That's 100 plus 7 which is 107 degrees. So that's the measure of my first angle. And then alpha ends up being seven times 10 plus three, which is 70 plus three, which is 73 degrees. So my two angles that are supplementary would be 107 degrees and 73 degrees, okay? And so that's how you would solve that problem. You would take the two angles that they give you and you add them together, set them equal to 180. All right, let me know if you have any questions about this, any questions whatsoever. If not, this is all I'm going to talk about, about complementary and supplementary angles. If you are new to my channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And I would definitely appreciate it. I'll appreciate it if you watch some more of my math videos. Thanks for tuning in and I'll see you in the next video.